Before the United States was the country we know it as today, the land was made of various colonies that formed from various countries, ideas, and beliefs. Other countries would send people to the newly founded America to claim the land in the name of the sending country. The colonies were founded based on one of two ideologies. First was the proprietary colony, in which the colony was given to people who would lead a group to the new world, set up, and run for themselves. The second was a royal colony in which the colony was strictly run by the king. The colonies were broken up into three sections, the New England colonies, the Middle colonies, and the Southern colonies. The New England colonies was comprised of New Hampshire, which also owned part of Vermont, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts, which also owned Maine. Massachusetts was originally formed by the Puritans who wanted to reform the Church of England. The Puritans wanted a simpler form of worship and wanted to do away with practices such as organ music, special clothing for priests, and finely decorated churches. In the eye of the Puritans, less is more. In 1629, the Puritans were being persecuted by King Charles I. Puritans believed England was entering a period of decline. Wanting to get out, England gave the Puritans the right to create the Massachusetts Bay Company in order to set out to the New World. The goal of the Puritans was to build a new society based on biblical laws and teachings. In this society, only members of the church could vote, leaving non-Puritan members out. John Winthrop led over 1,000 Puritans to North America, where he was chosen as governor, the leader of the area. The Massachusetts colony prospered, bringing over 15,000 people from England over the next 10 years. This time period was known as the Great Migrations, with most people settling in Boston. Shortly after the settlement of the Massachusetts colony, the Connecticut colony was founded. Not everyone in the Massachusetts colony wanted to be governed by religion. In 1639, Thomas Hooker took 100 settlers west and settled in a town called Hartford. Here, the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut was created. This outlined the plan of government for Connecticut. Under this, all men who were property owners could vote and limited the power of the governor. It was not until 1662 when Connecticut, which was comprised at that point of 15 towns, was formally recognized as the colony by the King of England. Around 1635, Roger Williams of Massachusetts believed in the separation of church and state, and that the Puritan leaders had too much power. Williams believed in religious tolerance, the idea that people should be allowed to practice their own beliefs, something non-Puritans were not allowed to do freely in Massachusetts. Williams was an outspoken advocate for this change, and as a result was ordered to leave Massachusetts. Williams spent the winter of 1635 to 1636 with the Native Americans. Williams created a positive relationship with the natives, and in the spring of 1636, the natives sold him the land. Under England, the colony of Rhode Island was established. Promoting complete freedom of religion, many settlers left Massachusetts to go to Rhode Island. Wanting to set up a fishing colony, John Mason set out to found the New Hampshire colony in 1639. However, before he could set out to go to the area, he died. In 1642, the land was taken over by Massachusetts and sold to the King of England in 1679. New Hampshire was set up as a Puritan colony with no religious freedoms and was known for its success in agriculture, particularly potatoes and fishing. 